Achha, last time we just discussed um, oxidation states very very briefly. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna just learn how to balance redox equations, and then we're gonna move on from there. So starting with starting with the fact that uh, uh, how do you calculate oxidation states? Because the last time we briefly had a discussion on on what are oxidation states. TK, I told you that oxidation states were so what were oxidation states? I told you that uh, they were basically you try to figure out who gains electrons, who loses electrons. You treat covalent molecule as if they are ionic uh, because you weren't you weren't interested in in whether they were forming ions or not. You were just interested in the fact that who's gaining electrons and who's losing electrons. Okay, so you've so HCl Cl is more electronegative, so the electrons are closer to Cl, which means Cl is minus one and H is plus one. So oxidation state is not the actual charge; it just tells you who is the one between the two who's gaining electrons and who's losing electrons. Now, the simple way to figure out oxidation states, otherwise, was that um, group one in compounds. You can when you have compounds. Then group one is always plus one. Group two tends to be plus two. And group three is uh, plus three. And then you had H, which is usually or normally it's plus one. Except with metal hydrides. Like if you have if you have an NaH, then remember H is less electronegative compared to pretty much all other metals, all other non-metals. So that means it's always at the losing end when it's forming a covalent molecule. But when it's with uh, let's say lithium, lithium is 0.98, or with Na, Na is 0.93. So that makes N is 0.93, this is 2.2. That makes H the more electronegative of the two. So in that case, except with metal hydrides where it's going to be minus one, NNA is going to be plus one. Otherwise, with the uh, with non-metals, it's always plus one. And then you have oxygen. Oxygen is usually minus two. Why is it minus two? Because oxygen is one of the most electronegative of all the elements. So you combine oxygen with any element in the periodic table. Oxygen is the more electronegative one. So that means uh, that oxygen is the one that's going to be gaining electrons. And it's the one that's going to be minus two. Except there's one element that's more electronegative than oxygen. That's fluorine. So, so oxygen is always minus two. Except in like two cases. One is except with fluorine. Because F is more electronegative compared to So F is more electronegative or there's another exception or in hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, where it's, where oxygen is actually minus one. Why is it minus one in H2O2? Because uh, we did H2O2, I think. We, did, we didn't do H2O2. So why is, why is it minus one in H2O2? Because if you look at uh, the structure of H2O2, that's like this. So oxygen is the more electronegative. So the electrons over here are closer to oxygen. The electrons over here with H are closer to oxygen. While the electrons that are in the middle, no one is gaining or losing those electrons because on both sides you have oxygen and both oxygens are equally electronegative. So over here, Ox these electrons, no one is able to gain or lose electrons. In total, oxygen gains one electron from H, which is why oxygen is going to be minus one and H is going to be plus one. This oxygen as well is going to be minus one and H is going to be plus one. While the middle electrons, no one is able to gain or lose electrons, those ones. So that's why oxygen is minus one. Is this clear as well? Clear? Yes or no? Is this clear? Zara, is this clear? Ibrahim? Clear.
ytterligare. Yes, sir. Thank you. So the rest is that um, the rest is that you've got. Um, I mean, you can use the oxidation state to figure out, which you already know how to do this. So, for example, if uh, if you know the oxidation states of two of the things, you know H is plus one. You know that O is minus two. So there are two hydrogens, so that's plus one times two. There's uh, four oxygens, so that's minus two times four. And the sulfur that's in the middle that's unknown. So that's going to be taken as X and you can find the oxidation state and that's going to give you what uh, the total charge is equal to zero. So if you solve for X, it's going to come out to be plus six. If I have another molecule like NaClO3, then you know what N is, you know what oxygen is, N is plus one. Cl, you're not sure, so that's X. Oxygen, you're sure that's minus two and that's times three and the whole thing should be equal to it's a neutral molecule, so that's going to be zero. And uh, you solve for X and X will come out to be equal to plus five. If you have uh, MnO4 minus one, then Mn, you're not sure, so that's X. Oxygen, you're sure that's minus two times four. And the total charge in this case is equal to minus one, so X will come out to be plus seven. TK, is this clear? Yes, so you can you can find the oxygen. I'll just do one more. H three PO four. So H is plus one times three. P is unknown, so that's X. Minus two times four, that's uh, oxygen. And the total charge is equal to zero. If you solve for P, that's probably going to come out to be equal to plus five. So I'm I'm pretty confident that everyone knows this, because this is something that you probably did in O levels as well. You did this in AS as well. Now the next thing is we're going to move towards balancing redox equations. Now whenever you have a redox equation. When someone is losing electrons and someone else is gaining electrons, whenever you have a redox equation, there's a gain and loss of electrons. So the gain of electrons should be equal to the electrons that are lost. Both of these, they have to be equal. So if I have Na reacting with Al3 plus and uh, it's forming Na plus one and Al. Now, if I have this reaction, atomize this equation looks balanced, but electron wise, this equation is not balanced because uh, Na over here loses how many electrons? It loses one electron, while Al on the other side is gaining three electrons. So the electrons that are gained and lost, they have to be equal, which is why I'm going to multiply this by three so that the electrons lost and gained become equal. So there should be three Na. Is that clear? You clear it? Yes or no? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now, you should know how to make, uh, so this is your redox equation. You have to make the electrons gain and lost equal. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you about redox equations is that uh, a redox equation is made up of two half equations, which you already know this. There's going to be a reduction equation, so they might ask you to write down the reduction equation, and there's going to be an oxidation equation. Now, the reduction equation in this case is the one that's uh, gaining electrons, so it's ALC+. Plus turning into Al. Now, the original equation does not show electrons, but the reduction, the half equations, they are going to show you electrons as well. So it gains three electrons. Uh, Na is the one that's getting oxidized, so that's losing electrons. It's turning from Na to Na plus one. So that means it lost 
electrons. ठीक है, so it lost electrons. Now you've got you've got an oxidation equation. You've got a reduction. You got a reduction equation. And you combine the two equations, you get the overall equation, right? And so the thing that I'm about to do that's very important because, I mean, the concept is very important. So when you when you add the reduction oxidation equation, you can divide it into half equations. They're going to ask you to write it write half equations by looking at the overall equation. You balance the number of electrons gain, gain and loss, which is why you're going to multiply this by three. And then you add up the equation and then you get the overall equation, which is Al3 plus. The electrons are going to get canceled out. So your overall equation does not show electrons. So it's got Na. Those are, that's my left-hand side and my product side is Al and 3 Na plus 1. So is this, is this clear? Yes, sir. It's, it's basic stuff. I said now, so I can come up with a relationship, which is that my half equations, my reduction half equation, and my oxidation half equation. These two combine, and they combine to form my overall equation. Now, so that's that's a relationship that you should know of, which you probably already know of. Now, sometimes what they'll do is they'll they'll give you the and the oxidation equations and the reduction equations they get multiplied by a certain number as well. Let's say A and B. Why? Because you have to balance the number of electrons gain and lost, right? For example, in the above equation, we were multiplying the oxidation equation by three. Okay, so the equations before adding them up, they get multiplied by a certain number as well. So the thing is, I can rearrange this. What if they give me the oxidation equation and they give me the overall equation and they, they're asking me for the reduction equation? So what is my reduction equation? That's going to be the overall equation minus the. So my reduction, I can rearrange this. So my reduction equation is basically what? It's my overall equation. Minus my oxidation equation. Is this clear? I mean, I can rearrange this entire concept. TK reduction plus oxidation gives you your overall equation. Overall minus oxidation equation gives you your reduction equation. Is that clear? Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, uh, can you show an example? Yeah, so I'm, 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 so we're going to do the same thing, right? Um, so, for example, the same equation over here. I'm going to take the overall equation, which was Al3 plus plus Na. And then we're going to do a slightly more difficult question. And it's forming what? Al plus 3 Na plus 1. So that's my overall equation, right? I'm going to subtract my reduction equation from this. I'm sorry, there was 3 Na. There was 3 Na over here as well. As I'm going to subtract the... I'm going to subtract the reduction equation from it. So Al3 plus, plus three electrons. Remember, I'm subtracting this forming Al, right? So that's my, that's my reduction equation. If I do that, what am I going to get? I'm going to get my oxidation equation because the Al3 plus will get canceled out, right? And uh, your EL over here will get cancelled out. So what are you left with? You're left with 3 and A minus 3 electrons. And on the product side, you've got 3 and A plus 1. 
and if you rearrange the take the minus three electrons to the other side, so it's going to be three and a plus one plus three electrons. So is that clear that I took the overall equation, I subtracted my reduction equation, and the result is I got my oxidation equation. Is that clear? Yes, thank you so much, sir. Okay, now, now we're going to try and do a slightly more difficult question. Remember, TK, so remember it's simple reduction plus oxidation gives you overall equation. And overall minus oxidation would give you reduction and so on. So we'll just do one question which is going to be slightly... So where's the, I think it's this one. Yes. So here's a question. They've given me the overall equation. So that's my overall equation. And they've given me the oxidation equation, the half equation one. That's the oxidation equation. Right? And he's asking you to figure out the reduction equation. So how would you do that? You've got the overall equation and you're going to subtract the oxidation equation from this. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, when you do that, you'll get your reduction equation. But before subtracting the oxidation equation, remember the oxidation equation has to be multiplied by a certain number. Remember this, that uh, when we were adding them up, the Na equation was getting multiplied by a certain number, right? So remember, the oxidation reduction equations are multiplied by a certain number. So can you figure out what this equation was getting multiplied by the to get the overall equation, any idea? Three. Uh, three. Why three? Six H two O like banana cube. Okay, because H2O. because remember this equation is part of the overall equation, right? I said, but this is the ox. Which thing do you think got oxidized in the process? Like you're saying, water is oxidized, right? So it's oxidized mm -hmm. to form oxygen, right? Hmm. So there are six O2s over here. So I think this should be multiplied by six because the, the O2 is coming from this equation, right? Is that is that clear? That water is getting oxide and forming oxygen, right? So if the overall equation has six O2, that means all those six O2 gas molecules came from this equation. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, 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 right hand side permission. No, I'm just looking at, well, I'm just looking at the oxidation. He told us this is the oxidation process, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the product in the oxidation process? That's the oxygen, right? Oxygen. Huh. So I'm going to look at oxygen because that, that is the thing that's getting oxidized, right? This is O minus two and this is zero, right? So this is, this is the product that's forming from the oxidation process. If the overall equation has six O2s, that means those six O2s are coming from this thing. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So I'm going to multiply this by six. So this is going to be 12. This will be six. This gets multiplied by six. It becomes 24. And this becomes 24 as well. Right? Now I'm going to take the overall equation. I'm going to subtract the oxidation equation. I should get the reduction equation. So if I start doing this and uh, focus on the reactants, subtract the reactants, right? So what is that going to give me? It's going to give me six CO2s plus six, uh, what, H2Os and minus 12 H2Os. So that's my left-hand side. And then I'm going to take the difference of the products, which is this minus this entire thing. So that gives me what? That gives me C6H12O6 
plus 6O2 minus 6O2. So that gets cancelled out. 6O2s get cancelled out. And then it's going to be, so that gets cancelled out. And then it's going to be minus 24H plus 1. And you're going to have minus 24 electrons, right? So that's my reduction equation, which can be further simplified because this is what 6 CO2s and this is what minus 6 H2Os. And what is that? That's C6 H12O6 and minus 24 H plus 1 and minus 24 electrons. How do you get rid of the minus sign? You rearrange them. So I take the 24 H plus 1 to the left-hand side. So that becomes plus 24 H plus 1 plus 24 electrons. And I take, uh, you already had glucose on the right-hand side, C6H12O6. And I'm going to take the minus 6 H2O to the right side. So that's going to be plus 6 H2O. So this now, I think this cannot be further simplified. So that's my, that's my reduction equation. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Tiki, is this clear? Zaina, is this clear? Zohair? Thank you. Okay, so so remember, it's a, it's a simple thing, but it kind of got complicated over here. So the concept is very simple. Reduction equation plus oxidation equation. I mean, this was a simple equation, by the way. So reduction in oxidation gives you overall equation. You take the overall equation, you subtract, let's say, the reduction equation, you're going to get the oxidation equation, right? The only thing is when you're subtracting, you need to know what that equation was getting multiplied with. So which was the, which was exactly what we did over here. We had the overall equation, we had the oxidation equation. All we had to do was subtract the two. Except you can't just simply subtract. You need to find out what the oxidation equation was getting multiplied with when the overall equation was made. And we figured out that if it had six oxygens, the six O2s were coming from this side, from the oxidation process, right? So I multiplied the whole equation by six and I just subtracted and I got this equation. TK, is this part clear? Jody, is this clear? Bakyun clear? Uh, Meher, is this clear? Yes, sir. I say anyway, so so we're going to come back. Tika, remember, it's a, it's a very simple, small concept. Tika, it's, I mean, you're already familiar with this, but probably never tried a question similar to this. Now, I mean, you know, I mean, basically what you, what you are, what you're familiar with is doing it this way. Reduction plus oxidation gives you overall equation. You're not familiar with the reverse. I so said, now we're going to, we're going to learn how to balance a redox equation. So let me. Remember, you have to make the number of electrons gained and lost equal. So I'm just going to open up a few redox equations. One second, let me just. That's just, so I'm going to. So I need to copy a few of these equations. I said, so I've got, um, okay, let's, let's try and balance them over here. One second. I said, let me rub off the, just give me one second. So I've got two equations. And we'll try and balance these two equations. So 
Starting with the first one, remember electrons gain and loss, they have to be equal. Can you tell me what the oxidation state of Cl over here is? Anyone any idea? What's the oxidation state of Cl? Plus 7. TKO plus 7. So that's plus 7. I is obviously minus 1. Cl over here is minus 1. And I over here, what's the oxidation state of uh, iodine over here? Plus 5. TK, that's plus 5. Now remember the electrons gain and loss, they have to be, they have to be equal. So Cl goes from plus 7 to minus 1. So what does, so what did it do? How many electrons were gained or lost? It gained eight electrons. So it gained eight, eight electrons. So plus eight electrons, right? And I minus one went from minus one to plus five. So that means it um, lost six, right? Well, yes. So I need to balance it. So what do I multiply both with? Do you multiply uh, the eight by six and six by eight? Or we can have a smaller number as well. Like I can multiply it by three and multiply this by four, right? I mean, I can make them 24, right? So it's simple. Uh, so there's going to be three CLs, right? And there's going to be four iodines. And now your equation is balanced. The electrons gain and lost are equal. Is that clear? So you equate the electrons for both of them and then you find a common multiple and then you just write that down or something? Yeah, basically you, you have to make the electrons gain and loss equal, right? So one CL was gaining how many electrons? It was gaining eight electrons, right? And one of the iodines was losing how many electrons? Six, right? So I had to make them equal. Yes. So if I have three CLs, that would mean a total gain of how many electrons? 24 electrons. And if I have four iodines, now each iodine is doing the same thing, right? So if I have four iodines, that means a total loss of 24 electrons. So now the electrons gain and loss are equal. Clear? Yes, sir. As we can do the same with the next equation. Remember, electrons gain and loss, they have to be equal. What's the oxidation state of iodine over here? Plus seven, same. Because this is plus seven, and uh, what is P? P is uh, minus three, and then I is minus one. P over here is neutral, so that's zero. H is plus one, and O is minus two, so we don't care about them because they're not they're not changing oxidation state. So this one P goes from minus three to zero. So what did it do? It lost uh, lost electrons, right? Lost three electrons, right? And iodine went from plus seven to minus one. So that means it gained how many electrons? Eight electrons. So okay, what do I multiply both with? To make them equal. 24 yoga, it's going to be 24, right? We yoga are going to be... It can't be less than 24. It has to be 20. This gets multiplied by 3. And this gets multiplied by 8. So then the electrons gain and loss are equal. So that means I should have 3 iodines. So I'm going to have 3 iodines. And I should have 8 phosphoruses. So there's 8 PH3. And over here I'll have 2 because that will make it 8 phosphorus over here as well. And the only thing that's left uh, is you can balance the whatever's remaining, you can balance it the normal way. So there are how many H's? H3's are 24, so there are 24 H's. So over here, the answer, the value should be 12, 12 water molecules. And you can check the oxygen as well. That's, that's balanced as well. TK, is this clear? Yes, sir. I said, let's let's try and balance a few more equations. Um, one second. I'm just gonna start. May I have to rub the because these equations are already balanced. So just one second. Let me. I said, so the next one. Okay, let's pick the previous one as well. I 
अच्छा नाउ नाउ दीज टू व्हाट्स द ऑक्सीजन स्टेट ऑफ आई ओवर हेयर प्लस फाइव ठीक है दैट्स प्लस फाइव आह व्हाट्स द ऑक्सीजन स्टेट ऑफ एन प्लस वन Yeah, that's uh, that's plus one. And then I over here is zero in NO. I think it's uh, it's definitely plus two, right? So this one, iodine goes from plus five to zero. So that's uh, what gain of five electrons. So it's gaining five electrons. N goes from plus one to plus two. So that's a loss of one electron, right? I said, what do I do? What do I multiply it with? Uh, I'll just make it equal to five, right? Five yoga is that clear? Yes, sir. So into yes, sir. That's into one, and this should be into five, right? But I'm I'm not going to use five because it's very hard to make n five. Is that clear? Because I would have to go into decimals, right? I have to put two point five over here. I mean, it would be so. I don't want to go into decimals. So I'm going to double this. I'm going to what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make it ten electrons. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make both of them equal to ten electrons. So that's multi that gets multiplied by two, and this one gets multiplied by ten. Do you understand the reason why I'm doing this? That yes, with sir. with five, it was like um, I had to go into fractions. So with ten, so I need ten nitrogens. So that's I don't have to go into fractions. I I can just write five. That's ten nitrogens, and I can have ten nitrogens over here, right? And two iodines. So two iodines over here, and there are already two iodines on the other side. So that's balanced. So now the electrons are gained and lost. Sir, are why why are we not considering the H plus ion, even though you know? Okay. It's... Nee, nee, the reason the, the the reason we not we not interested in the H and O is because they're not getting oxidized or or reduced, right? Yes, sir. So I'm just focusing on those elements that are getting oxidized and that are getting reduced. H is plus one. H is still plus one over here. So it didn't it didn't gain or, or lose or either lose electrons, right? Yes. So now since we have balanced the number of electrons gained and lost, now we can balance the rest of the equation in the normal way. So we can now focus on the H and O. Uh, so how many, how many oxygens do you have on the left hand side? That's five over here and uh, six. That's eleven, right? So you already have eleven oxygens. That's ten over here and uh, one over here. So that's eleven. So I need, I got two H's over here. So I just need two H plus one ions, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. I said then. I said we'll skip. We'll we'll focus on how to split this equation into two half equations as well. Uh, but let's focus on that. How would you how would you split this equation into two half equations? Like what's what's the reduction equation over here? The reduction equation is who is gaining electrons? Uh, Iodine, right? Iodine. So it's it's IO three minus one, and we can write we have already balanced it. So IO three minus one and was gaining how many electrons? Ten electrons, right? And it was forming what? It was forming um, I two, right? So that's my reduction equation. Now remember that's not balanced. It's not the oxygens are not balanced. We're going to bring in the oxygens later on. Uh, what about the oxidation equation? The oxidation equation was that you had um, what did you have? You had N two O five N two Os, and they were gaining how many electrons? They were sorry, they were losing ten electrons, and they were forming. Ten NO, 
and they lost how many electrons? They lost 10 electrons. Now, the only other thing that's present in the equation is, now remember that I've got the two equations. I've got the reduction equation and I've got the oxidation equation. I've split the equation into, into two parts. Okay, I've separated the oxidation and the reduction. The only thing is that these equations are not balanced. I mean, electron-wise, they are balanced. 10 electrons being gained, 10 electrons being lost. The only thing is that you have to somehow fit in the H plus one and water molecules into the equation. That's the only problem that you're going to have now. So because because you got oxygen over here, there's no oxygen on the other side, right? So how do you fit in the... I mean, that's the only leftover that you have. H plus one and water molecules. So I'm going to try and figure that out. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is because I've got I've got only H plus one and water molecules. So I'm going to add H plus one ions over here. And the reason I'm adding H plus one over here is that I ha I have to do something with the oxygen, right? So it's probably that the H plus one are combining with the oxygens over here and they're forming water. And to do that, there should be, I mean, there's six oxygens on the left-hand side, so there should be six water molecules. And that would give you 12 H plus one ions. So, so focus back, let's focus back on this. So remember, our reduction equation was IO3 minus 1, gaining 10 electrons, forming iodine, right? Except that the equation wasn't completely balanced because it had oxygen on one side. So I had these leftover H plus 1 ions and some water molecules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and balance that reduction equation by introducing H plus 1 and water molecules. I had oxygen over here, so I thought that the H plus 1 is going to go with oxygen and it's going to form water that's how i ended up balancing it i ended up using the h plus one and the water molecules in that equation to try and balance this equation atomize is that clear yes sir okay clear is this part clear ibrahim minahil meher yes sir akshita is this clear Yes, sir. So what about the other one? It's going to be done the same way, right? Uh, isn't the other one balanced? No, it's not. So the other one is, I got N2O turning into NO, and it was losing 10 electrons. So I wrote it down. Now, again, the only thing I have at my disposal is H plus 1 and water molecules, because that's the only thing that's appearing in the equation. So I'm just going to try and... Because this this equation is not balanced, right? You got five oxygens over here, and you got ten oxygens on the other side. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I got too many oxygens on that side. I just have H plus one and water to go by. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to introduce water molecules, because I need more oxygens on this side, right? So. 10 oxygens, so that's 5 oxygens. So I, I'm going to add 5 water molecules. So my oxygens are balanced now. 10 oxygens, I had 5 oxygens, and I, I added 5 water molecules to to get the total right for oxygen, oxygen atoms, right? Now, I've got too many H's now. The N is already balanced. That's 10N, 10N, so that's already balanced. I've got 10 H's over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 10 H plus 1 ions on this side, because I just had H plus one in water to go by, right? So that's my oxidation half equation. Is that clear? Yes, and and if, you, if you combine these two equations, you're gonna end up with this overall equation. Is this clear? Okay. Yes, so next time we'll practice this a bit more because remember it's, it's something that, that you already know of. You know that uh, it's the reverse that's the trouble, that's problematic. You already know how to do this stuff. You already know, 
you've you've studied this since O levels. You studied that there's a reduction equation, there's an oxidation equation. You add them up, you balance the number of electrons, and you get the overall equation. It's the reverse that's slightly more problematic. That if you have the overall equation, how do you extract the reduction equation from it? How do you extract the oxidation equation from it? And um, we're going to keep on, we're going to practice a few more of these balancing electrons as well. So we'll just keep on doing this a little bit and then we'll move on. TK, but is this clear? So, TK, let's continue tomorrow then. TK with the same stuff. Okay then, everyone. Take care. Love face. Thank you, sir. Sir? Gigi. Sir, I'm a new student and I... Tala, I've made tala. Tala, no? G. G. So I just wanted to ask if my previous lectures kaha pe dek sakta hu matlab after the payment ya koi aisi procedure ha wo to hai wo to main folder hai uske andar I'll add you na plus uh, previous jo na wo is board ke upar bhi add kar dunga ye nahi enthalpy change kiya tha humne khali wo itna bada topic enthalpy enthalpy change i'm done with enthalpy change and oh. then uh, our teacher ne per, i think topics jump kiye because we started with uh, equilibria so maine ye chapter abhi nahi kiya isliye main keh raha hu agar aap mujhe video lectures ki link de dein google classroom mein add kar dein so oh. i can go through them so okay. once mujhe, i then... ha mujhe email send kar do theek hai okay wo sare so, uh, ha main uske enthalpy ki bhej deta hu theek hai uske andar main add kar do ye folder bana hua hai just one second कहीं तो बना हुआ था इसमें नहीं सॉरी आप कहां से हो कतर नहीं मैं हाँ कतर में रहता हूं लेकिन हूं पाकिस्तान से ही अच्छा अच्छा एक सेकंड रखना यहां पे स्टार्ट 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 हाँ अभी भेज दो ईमेल ये मैं ऐड कर लेता हूँ ए टू का ना बना होगा एक सेकंड एल सी है ठीक है ओके सर ये मुझे अभी भेज दो इसी के अंदर ना ओके सर मैं आपको अभी ईमेल भेज देता हूँ